see Dagda and where do you want to see them bring their composition? Ooh. Honestly, I, yeah, I was going to say the Corky still up and available. They could just nab that one for themselves. Yeah. Corky going to be picked up there. And I feel like for IG now, right, shouldn't go towards the Xinjiao. And then the big question is like, what do you want to try and go towards? Does Yuikai feel comfortable taking the Victor matchup? I don't think you'll end up taking him here anyway. Oh, maybe it goes straight towards the LeBlanc game. And then I feel like, at least on IG side, right, your third rotation here should be your top one. Get something come from Zika. You can then ban away uh, potential counter matchups. And always have the opportunity then to lock in your AD carry later and your sport. Because honestly, now that we've dipped down to that next tier, things like the Kaisas, the Ezreals, the Samiras all become up and available. And there's no real pressure to try and take that pick. Yeah, and I think the Ultra Prime recognizing this as well. It's probably the first time in a long time we are going to see pretty much all solo laners maybe locked and loaded alongside their junglers. Normally we do see those AD carries, but with the bands being where they are, there's no real, I suppose, urgency right. on either of these teams to, the to pick it first. Give us the Gwen. Let's move on. Come on. We all know where this is going. <laughs> Let's come on. <laughs> but yeah. It's like, all right, go on now. Yeah. None of this now. Come you on. You know now. this is going to happen, right? Um, She's just so strong at the moment. Um, okay, ZS actually maybe going towards the Gragas. So looking to provide a bit more of a front line for Ultra Prime. But um, yeah, I mean, it still works out. It does give the opportunity for Zika to just go back towards the Gwen if he wants to. There we go. <laughs> thank uh, thank you. you very much. <laughs> and there we go. Right, so now you're looking at, okay, what do you want in the AD carry and support roles? At least for Ultra Prime, they already have their engage tool. Whereas on IG, it's a little bit less. So I wouldn't be surprised to see Ultra Prime like banning away things like the Leona. Maybe something along the lines of, um, uh, 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 well, maybe not Alistair, but like, Nautilus. you know, these big engaged to Nautilus, thank you. The big engaged tools that you can go for in this bot side. Um, whereas for IG, they're actually looking to take away the, the gin, so AD carry is taken off the board. And then we'll have to see what they decide to go towards. Maybe they think, hey, look, let's get rid of Elks to uh, Ziggs as well here. Just anything that can play at range and give IG the chance to, to actually come into these fights. I want to see. Legitimately, I want to see nine. No, no, it wouldn't be nine. It'd be seven AD carry bands. Two more, and we oh. get seven AD <laughs> carry bands. So the Draven band away, the Ziggs, if it gets banned here as well by IG, would be another AD carry band. So I wanted to see what's, what's scraping the bottom of the barrel. You know, where are we going to go in terms of the tiering of picks? Because we're well past, I say we're in B tier picks now, and with the next few bands coming out, we could get into C if we, if we need to. Yeah, I still think like for IG, right? You still got first pick here so this kind of benefits you you can always go back towards like oh, Kais is off the board Ezra's still there you can go Zyra Khan and um, Samira is still an option and uh, the Ziggs is still there like there's still a lot available if you want to go towards it looks like Tarek Tarek's a weird one for me actually Lucas was a, a one trick Tarek in the LDL yeah. for a very long time it just feels like you don't have a huge amount of like up front burst that Tarek can so stop but yeah I mean all right Anyway, Tarek taken off the board. Um, looks like it is going to be the Ezreal coming through for Shao Yu Ji. Um, I still think for IG, you need a decent amount of engage. So I think it'll be either the Rakan or the Leona that comes through for Lucas in this scenario. Both work really well when it comes towards the sideline pressure. It is going to be the Zyra Rakan for Elk and Shao though, which means we'll see the Leona coming through for and it's curious as well, we're actually seeing a bit of a different build for the Zaya coming out here. We're seeing Lethality picked up on her. I'll be curious to see if Elk does go with that. It's a bit more aggressive. You're not waiting for that two slash two and a half item spike to be relevant. You get a relevant spike at the start. And it does tend to work a lot better when you have something like the Rakan to back you up. But the Leona locked in there for Lucas, like you mentioned. And now both team comps locked and loaded. It feels like Ultra Prime are still looking pretty strong as we come into the second game. Yeah, I mean, Ultra Prime, you've got a very standard team fighting composition, right? Ton of damage that can come through. The uh, little bit of poke that can come through from the Zaya, always nice. But then when you look at the Corky, right? Uh, great late game scaling coming through and super strong front line. IG, you've got a bit more options, though, to try and play side lane. Prime 1-0 up in this series against IG. We're already seeing some level one shenanigans coming out right now. Lucas is going to find himself very far away from his team. If he walks up, he'll be spotted. <laughs> they haven't seen him just yet. Oh, oh he's no, he's, he's dead. dead. He's dead. Nothing he can do. Knocked up, taken down. Who they're going to donate this one over to? It's going over to the Zaya. That is a great start there for the bot side of Ultra Prime. I mean, there's not a huge reason for Lucas and to they get, get the that ward. vision, right? <laughs> like, you you can place that ward over at the Raptors and keep yourself safe. Like, there's no reason for you to try and go that aggressive and they end up getting caught out. Um, now, as you say, 
Tier and Longsword already picked up for the side. This is such a nice start being able to stack up this tier super early and get towards that Mana Mune as quickly as possible. Plus, even more poke for the lane, right? Like, the whole way that this build revolves around is your Q poke alongside that Summon Airy. So when you've got extra mana sustain to utilize in that lane, it works out super well, especially against something like an Ezreal, where you're able to poke through the lane, push, and get that damage off. Well, speaking of getting damage off, both these mid laners immediately going head first into each other. It is going to be Corrupting Pot versus the Long Sword and Triple Pot start of Cryon. Both junglers starting on their rub buffs respectfully as well. So, see how this bot lane goes. Lucas and Xiao Si going to have to go into this. They're going to go straight out to Xiao Wu Jin. They say, we do not care about anything you do or say. We are going to keep taking these solo kills. We are getting revenge for game one. It's been a while since we've seen the Zyra Khan, but Zyra Khan's still insanely strong. You end up getting that early uh, buff coming through to the damage with the W, so both Rakan and Zyra's attack speed is buffed. And you can see they're just very easily able to take down this, uh, this Ezreal. Again, great start from Ultra Prime, and this is what we expected to see as well. I love seeing Elk. We highlighted him before we came in today's game because Elk feels like he's the guy who's going to be able to put in so much effort, so much work into these two teams that it's just going to be impossible to deal with them. They go back, they get themselves back onto the map as quick as they possibly can, and double longsword. I feel like they're just going to keep doing this because they know that in the early levels, this Ezreal is just so weak. Yeah, and there's not much that you can really do here as Shun, right? You go down to that bot side, You've got an Ezreal who's only got the Doran's Blade as Ryan, actually taking a good amount of damage. Um, but yeah, Shun, if you go bot, you've got double longsword coming through from Elk. Elk and Shousey just the stronger duo at this point in time as well. So you actually end up risking just falling yourself if you try and go down there. So this doesn't really get any easier um, for IG's bot side. And traditionally, when you think of like the Ezreal, right? get out and roam with the Leona but when you're set behind like this you don't get push and bot side level six gets hit for Elk and Chelsea they can dive you all the time especially with no cleanse and show you yeah it's a bit of a bit of a tough start right now for the side of IG already down a thousand gold basically all in that bot size we are going to see now an engage in this bot lane Lucas trying to trade with Chelsea has got the aftershock and that's basically why he's feeling confident to do that he needs to be one engaging because if they get engaged upon they're in a lot of trouble yeah you can see those zika spots hacker up on this top side so should knows the path in here and this is actually going to prompt him to try and move down towards this bottom side of the map i don't know if this is going to work out though it's very difficult again double long sword available Elk is being corralled in. They're going to use a TP, and this is going to be the cleanse used as well. He gets the feathers to jump back as Lucas will fall. They can't take out Elk. Yes, they can, but it's traded back two for one. Ultra Prime wise to the tricks. Yeah, most of that wave was already dead by the time it hit the tower as well, so Elk doesn't really lose out on this. He ends up picking up the assist off the back, and now you've got a serrated Dirk there. I don't know, a lot committed there by IG and Ultra Prime. Yes, you get the TP out of ZS, but... He's going to walk back top. He's going to be fine. He's not going to really miss out. And it's all coming up ultra prime. It really, really is. And I think the big thing to recognize from this as well is that, yes, we mentioned that Hacker got caught out in terms of vision, but that just meant, you know, we know that you know we know. So then they were able to say, look, we know you're going to look for this play. We're just going to move the Gragas down to the bot, uh, into the bush. We're going to TP him onto the bot side. Really, really well read there from the side of ultra prime. And again, yes, they get the kill. It does go over to the Ezreal. That's great. That does sort of mitigate a lot of the issues you had but Dude. lucas what are you doing my son get out of here shun's got to go has to grab him by the hand like the mammy he is and goes come on now let's get out you shouldn't be doing that don't be playing with those kids yeah, i mean manages to back away i mean very greedy invade um but i mean that's kind of been the story about this bot lane for ig right and i don't know maybe on that diet they thought that look they're still only level two for ultra prime we can make the play but first um minion that hits the terror both elk and chelsea hit three and they don't decide to call off the dive, so I'm not sure, but... Oh! Oh! No, he's no Ignite. No Ignite, no he's all right, but that's the second time now we've seen these big tra trades coming through from you, Akai, and this is what I was talking about, right? I'd love to see Shun actually supporting this play in mid lane, like shutting down the Corky early, but because Shun is trying to right the wrongs of his bot lane, he hasn't really been in a position to um to help out an Ultra Pro... Or, sorry, help uh, shut down Brian in this mid lane. He is just focusing on this bot side, Shun trying to make sure Xiao Ji 
has a little bit of a decent time. He's actually got a bit of a CS d uh, favor in his in his wake, as uh, we see Shun now starting off this dragon, so they know that the the Xin Zhao is on that bot side. He needs to be a little bit careful. Let's have a look at the replay here into that mid lane. It is just crying. Just taking an unfortunate amount of damage. A flash was actually used by Yuakai, not used by Cryon. So that's actually a big oh. cooldown to not quite get the damage down. That pot MVP there. The fact that it just ticked over in time. But um, unfortunately for Yuakai, no flash. But it shouldn't really mean too much, right? He's still got the distortion. There's not really a way for Hacker to get in there. And Yuakai, as long as he's quick on the trigger finger, should be all right. And um, Shun now gets Dragon as uh, Lucas in trouble. He's not going to die. I hope. Uh, As, uh, that's uh, Reddit Dirk doing damage. He's dead. The ignite's going to be enough. Tick, tick, boom. And that is another kill going over to this bot side. They have five kill participation, two kills, three assists each, and they are just loving life right now. I mean, Xiaoyu Ji had the right call, right? Move back to Terror. Get to the safety point. But Lucas decided to kind of put himself out beyond the wall, and he gets caught. And now three deaths over to Lucas. Two kills apiece for Elk and Chelsea, and you're very quickly getting towards this eclipse, and once that happens, like, Xiao Yuji just can't match up, and now you're looking at, all right, well, quarter pa or 15 seconds past seven, right, we can look towards the Rift Chart. We can look towards um, a ton of these objectives and look to take over the game from this bot lane. You can see it there on the little picture-in-picture -picture replay. It's just lazy recall from Lucas. There's nothing else to yeah. say about it. It's just... They just said, okay, well, I walk forward. I either get him in this middle bush and, and delay his recall, or I know he's in this furthest bush, and we get a knock-up on him. We min him, burn a summoner, or, you know, at best, get a kill, and they got the best results out of it. So really, really not loving this game right now from Lucas. Very much, you know, poor play on his part there to really give that one over. And again, like I said, it was about Xiao Muji getting back into this mid lane. Has been doing well on the CS front. Is equal on that, you know, kind of setup, regardless of the fact that he's died twice. Shun will start up this for Terrell, but I really want to see him playing towards the middle. Because when you look at someone who can actually deal with Elk, it's only going to be Yuikai, right? He's the one that's got the dive. Zika can try and go, but there's a hell of a lot that he's got to get through to get there. And um, attacker. Yeah, one bot. Oh, yeah, there is a flash and a heal. They are going to get the one and two out of him as they go forward with the feathers. Drag him back. Hacker picks up a kill. They know exactly what they need to do and where they need to do be doing it. Cryon now going to use the package here onto Shun. Just to try and defend his blue buff, but here comes ZS with the flash belly bop into the explosive cast. Very nicely set up there, but the subtle enters of Ultra Prime. And this game feels like it's really quickly accelerating away from IG. I mean, 7 to 1 of 3,000 gold lead in favor of Ultra Prime. Nine minutes. And you, yeah, you didn't get the Rift Terror, but like your bot lane's been zoned away from the bot lane terror. They're meant to get their third plate, and you've got nothing. Like, unfortunately for IG, this mid game, or this early game even, has gone completely awry. And you don't have a lead anywhere on the map to really justify you being able to play against what Ultra Prime have. Yeah, it's it's starting to get a little bit desperate. You can see Cryon just so safe now with the double bolts in hand on the Corky. He's going to be able to do so, so much. To get the recall on bot side, they will be able to pick up all this farm here from the side of IG. But let's have a look at the replay here because this is just Hacker saying, I don't care if you're an Ezreal with full summoners. I'm still going to be able to kill you because Shousey's in a perfect position. Yeah, and you can, like, you see everything, right? He gets the, the Cataclysm in, you got Chelsea behind, ZS does die to Zika, so finally IG getting something back on the map with the solo kill in Zika's first series. Nicely done, but oh dearie me, speaking of solo kill, they don't know which one is the right one, but it does not matter as Chelsea picks himself up another kill, 3-0 and 4 on that Rakan, and this is where we start to get a little bit more worried about this, because yes, great, you got a kill in topside, that's in the clips onto the Zaya. That is the first item at just before 10 minutes as we come up towards these dragon stackings. And great for IG, the only real silver lining for them is that Topside got a solo kill and they got that first Drake. Yeah, I mean, maybe try and just make Zika as big as possible, but I mean, oh, no. he's gonna have to be like oh, your no. photo of me, attack on Titan size if he wants to do anything. Uh, they're gonna get the TP coming in. That's gonna be the Blanc joining, but too little too late. Not really a lot else you can do, and uh, that's a big teleport cooldown down. Look at the mid lane. You can just see Cryon pushing this one in. Not quite sure why he went a little bit too far forward, and now <laughs> going to spot that you get pinched her down a little bit. Let's go! I let's mean, go! Yeah, let's go. He's going to flash away, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and he's going to start the TP as well. So they know he's in this brush. They know he don't, he don't, don't. <gasps> they don't know he was in there. I don't think they could have stopped him anyway, uh. but... Oh, 
cry and has to use both the summoners to get himself out alive. Yeah, I mean, look, whatever about the play being a little bit messy, I like the uh, the build coming through for crying here. Early Merc threads picked up means that the potential of a root into a shun gank pretty much negligible, plus being able to deny a lot of the damage coming through from both the AP mid and top. And it's going to make things pretty nice for crying. So now you've lost your opportunity to play through mid here as IG. Maybe you can try and play through top with this Rift Herald about to despawn. It looks like Lucas and Shun are going to move up that top lane and see if they can get some plates over towards this. 4,000 gold, though. It's, uh... Yeah. And it's all in... Not all, but basically a lot of it is in bot side. 1,300 there for Shousey. And then I think it is about two... Just under 2,000. So about 1,700. As we can see, there's the ultimate there. Hacker, very smart. Just says, I don't care. I'm just going to wait for it. Go for it. There's the explosive cast on the top side. They're investing a lot of time here. And there's only a couple of plates ready for them to be able to take. Sh Lucas is shadowing just a little bit. But I don't think they're going to be able to get the full tower here. And it's being traded for pretty much full pressure in bot side. The Shao Ji gets cataclysmed upon. You have no flash. You have no way of leaving. God, man. This is... I feel like this is just bullying at this stage. Yeah, I mean... IG, we came into today. We're like, hey, look, you know, honestly, from my point of view, I thought that IG would do a lot better than we're seeing at the moment, right? It was like, close. It was definitely close between these two teams. Yeah, exactly. But that's what I mean. It was close, right? Um, especially when you look at IG, like... They've had some close games. I mean, a lot of their scores have been 0-2, but it hasn't been, like, just complete decimation that we're seeing. But Ultra Prime, they're coming in. They're absolutely dismantling them, right? Um, unfortunate that game one bot lane didn't go well, but this is a different story. It is a very different story. Sean having to flush away there from the barrel. Knows that if the, the slow comes out, he is dead. Yuakai, though, as well as that. Shousey goes in with the quickness. Does get the knock-up as well, but it's only just to dissuade the rest of IG from going into it. While that was all happening, Elk now up to two and a half thousand gold ahead. He's nearly three thousand gold ahead of his counterpart. And honestly, I just don't see this getting any better for Xiao Wuji. He's gonna need about four items before he's even able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Zaya. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's not it's not happening. Elk is like totally fine. And look, again, who deals with Elk, right? He's got cleanse. He's got so Lucas trying to lock him up isn't really going to do anything. He's already got the ult as well because he's a Zaya, so that's going to keep him nice and safe when you look towards the peel. And as you say it right, two items now completed for him with the Man of Mune now done. He's in a phenomenal spot where that damage is going to be churning out, and there's just little that IG can do. I don't really know what else to say right now. It's ten kills to two, four thousand gold lead in favor of Ultra Prime to Dragon Peace. <laughs> Honestly, this is where you just go, put your feet up, and just wait for it all to be. Make I yourself a cup of tea. Just chill out. It'll all be over soon. Yeah. Didn't we say that about the lockdowns? Didn't we have it at the end of two years ago at this that point? <laughs> Why you gotta make it sad? <laughs> I gotta be real about it. Well, they're gonna try and make this very real for ZS as he's in underneath the tower. Zika will take a couple of tower shots as they go into it. But Shousky is here. I don't think they're going to go for a full real engage. And yeah, great explosive cast. They try and jump on top of him. Lucas will go golden as ZS flashes away. He will finally fall. It's a good dive here from the side of IG as they try and find Shousky as well. These health bars are low. No one else really joining him. And he will get himself over the wall with the grand entrance. It's still only a one for none. While that was happening, Yuukai blew his flash in top side. And guess he's been pushing in the mid lane. I was going to say, if uh, Shousey hadn't actually gone for that weird pick that they tried to make in mid, I'm pretty sure Ultra Prime could have turned that play around to the bot side, but fortunately not able to, so ZS will fall, Zika getting more attention, and 2-0 and now with the terror falling in his favor, but as you say that, right, top for crying, mid for Elk, you're still trading up on the map, and we're still looking at a 4,000 gold lead for Ultra Prime. Yuikai here for crying, but I don't think he can just one-shot this dude anymore. Like, he's got the Merc Threads there. He should be reasonably all right. Yeah, Merc Threads just not really in a position to be able to be taken down. And two items there onto the, the Zaya. It's not only just the two items they have. They also have the Eclipse, so the survivability there is just so much stronger when you get those three abilities and extra shields. Have a look here. ZS does do very well to just mitigate all of this engage. But like you said, without the quickness, it's very difficult for the side of Ultra Prime to, to really save ZS. Yeah. Also, nice job by Lucas to like have that stopwatch, right? So you start to um, move the tower aggro around so it's on the shared health bars rather than just being on Lucas and he's able to get a second stun in. So nice job there from IG at least to get something, but 
I mean, it's it's trying to find the the silver lining here on a very very gray day for IG. Yeah, like yes, they got a kill bot lane. That's fantastic, and they got a tower, but they lost two towers. They lost the flash off of Yukai, who's still waiting for his first item. That's the big thing right now is that Yukai just hasn't really been able to do anything. As we see the flag and drag, not gonna hit anybody, but you have the Rift Herald in hand now for the side of Ultra Prime. They can just push this into mid lane, bot lane, top lane, wherever their hearts desires. The problem though is that you're trading it for a dragon that spec spawn right, and you can go full push for Ultra Prime in the mid lane, like. ZS is going to be able to come up here, take this. Crying can always move in now with the crew for Dragon, and there's not really anything there. Like, again, Ultra Prime, you've even got the Rift Herald there and Hacker's back pocket as well. And um, you're going to even get Crying with the TP. Yeah, looks like they're just going to go Dragon straight into, hey, let's Rift Herald bot and crack ourselves up in Tier 2. Yep, yeah, Rift Herald bot or any even Rift Herald mid. They have so many options available to them. There's the shoe shop <laughs> run. I love this from Hacker. He's just like, I'm not even going to risk it. Gonna walk away, you know, make sure you can't even get it as we now see Shun and Zika coming in towards this bot side, but with a TP available for a ZS and Cryon very much doing a lot of damage as he goes in with the package very aggressively, he has to flash away. It just wasn't coordinated, but they're just so far ahead that I don't think it's going to really matter. There's the quickness coming out. As we can see, Shun now taken down. They will get a TP in from ZS as well. So despite it being a very scuffed engage, they're just too far ahead. Ultra Prime will take themselves a turret and a hell of a lot more gold. Yeah, they'll get the bot tier 2. Shelly will die though, so unfortunately we'll not be able to get another charge onto this bot lane structure. But as you say, right, like they still come out with the team by Wayne crying. Going way too aggressive under the tower though. Um, bit, bit far forward, but Ultra Prime managed to bring it back. Yeah, I think he went far forward expecting Hacker to come in. And then as he was going in on the package, he just looked to his left and saw him summoning the Rift Herald. It was like, uh-oh, I guess I have a look at it here. Because again, not really much else to say about it. He knows that Hacker is there on the left. And this is it literally. He kind of goes, okay. And then Hacker just starts channeling. Actually, it's actually Hacker who really just like leaves now high and dry. He just starts channeling the Rift Herald for no real reason. I will say, if you package underneath the tower into the only person in IG that is there. relevant, and Shun <laughs> it's probably Harsh not gonna fair. work out, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, here we are, twelve to four, <laughs> six thousand gold lead. Uh, my analysis is gonna run fairly dry in this game. Or this I mean, game cause, can't really blame yeah. me for that one. There's uh, not really much to analyze. One team is very far ahead. One team has a. Nearly three items Zaya. The other team has a one item not even fully stacked tier Ezreal. So that that's all you really need to know. And this is where those this is why we've seen this uh, lethality build come out from the Zaya because with her short range, if that it doesn't matter about getting to the late game anymore. It's all about getting up towards those, you know, big early skirmishes and making sure that you can just keep going ahead. But I appreciate it. He's trying his hardest here, despite yeah, the sniffing. the the mountain that he has to climb. Hey, objective yeah. bounties, though. Yeah, and look, I gotta say, for Zika on his first day coming in, right? Um, yes, muted in game one, but didn't really have an opportunity to get involved, right? And um, it's not exactly like we said the, that IG were setting up the team well and not really looking for flanks. Now, you could argue that he probably could have been looking for flanks himself, but in lane, got the advantage over ZS in a matchup that um, really should have gone in uh, ZS's favor. Now in game two, again, solo kills onto ZS. So at least from Zika's perspective, it's, um, it's been pretty good. It's just unfortunate that once again, it's IG's bot lane that's faltering quite substantially. Yeah, I, I, look, we've seen now a couple of times from IG's, even last year. My God, Lucas, walk away, man. There's nothing you can do. But we've seen it a couple of times. They have prioritized the top lane as the point of where they want to change. And I'm going to be real with you, IG. I don't think that's your problem. Nani's still a solid carry in the top side. Dicker looking pretty decent as well. I don't think it's the top lane that's stopping you from winning games. No offense. I mean, we said it at the start of the day, right? Nani, honestly, was pretty good. I'm pretty sure... <laughs> when discussing this with uh, Ox and Jordan, the word Giga Chat was thrown around to describe Nani. <laughs> Hashtag um, protect Nani. <laughs> yeah, but, like, give Zika the chance because, well, Zika no doesn't chance have a there. chance there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no chance there. He's just uh, didn't realize there was Sorel the Scrooge there onto Elk, so Elk's able to just slow him down, which gives enough of an opportunity here for the. Rakan to make move and then 20 seconds almost on the dot. They're gonna go for Baron and yeah, I'm gonna see a miracle steal here. It's a bit of a flip. I actually don't like this from our uh, from Ultra Prime, but they're trying to just force IG into corralling around them so they can put down damage. 
you don't have the uh, quickness, which means that you can try and get some poke, but honestly, the poke is kind of negligible, and it's Ultra Prime who's getting the Baron and dealing more damage as well. Yuikai goes in, Hacker! I mean, Hacker's almost dead here. They're going to jump straight out of the Shun, though, who's as well almost dead. They're going to try and see if they can make this one work. Hacker, though, will die. The Gragas will fall as well as they go straight in. Elk is so aggressive right now. He will need to run away, though, as there comes Zika as he tries to jump straight on top of him. The LeBlanc trying to do so much, but Elk is just too damn big. They will get the Arcane Shift out, and the Corky Rocket from downtown does solidify that team fight win. It is going to be Yuikai trying his very best to find the bush to TP into to try and get himself away, but honestly, I think he's just dead. He's not even going to waste the cooldown. He knows that he's going to die regardless. Yep, there it is. Boom. Ace coming out for Ultra Prime and the Baron. I appreciate that Yuikai decided to go for the Joust. An honorable death there, where he <laughs> runs head first into Hacker who's coming the other direction. It's just unfortunate that he got knocked off the horse. And now, Ultra Prime start to push in top. Baron is there. Dragon in two seconds. Third Dragon coming through for Ultra Prime. And in the replay... This did look a little dodgy, right? Yuikai gets scary. some good damage on towards Hacker. Hacker forced the back wave. And Sh G, if he had a bit more damage on him, could have actually taken down Hacker. So, won't say it's exactly the cleanest from Ultra Prime. And Shun, desperately trying to get into the pit, but it is into the waiting hands of Elk, who just him finish off so many members. Yeah, and he flashes forward. Again, this is not a Gale Force. This is not a, uh, a traditional ADC carry build. As we can see now, Shun forced to flash away. We are going to have him being chased down by ZS, but the scissors is enough to keep them away from him just for the moment. 10,000 gold lead at 22 and a half minutes. Barred up for another minute and a half. You have the package as well. You don't even care about the dragon at this point. You just want to be able to end this game. And honesty, this is very good showing here from Ultra Prime. Bit disappointing from the side of IG, as we can see Luke. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm on the highway <laughs> to hell. <laughs> he was not having a good time there. Oh, now we can see the greatness coming in as Elk tries to go in and fall and tries to follow up with the rest of his team. But without his flash, he's just a little bit slow. Wait for him. He's full of money and chocolate as he now starts to crack open the base. They get themselves the inhibitor. They still have the Baron. Ultra Prime going to be keeping themselves up in the standings ahead of the rest of the pack of the bottom as they are looking to try and solidify themselves a 2-3 scoreline. Yeah, I mean, one more kill going over onto Zika. Terrors are here. Baron is up. And after that long game, number one, IG and Ultra Prime bring us back on time with a quick game number two. I think I speak for everybody when I say great that Ultra Prime came out absolutely swinging. Never put Elk onto Ziggs ever again. <laughs> I want to see him on these aggressive carries. And look, like, there were 680 carry bats. Six! And he still came out on top of that because, like, yes, IG were arguably in the advantage saying we get preference, but Elk's just too clean, man. Elk's just too good. Yeah, I'm trying to see what Elk's career stats are because I feel like he's, like, I feel like we're doing him dirty with the Ziggs. Like, okay, no.